time for your release. Yeah. Yeah. This year, 2022, for the Forward Christian Center has been declared our year of demonstration. All throughout this year, God has been releasing different things to the partners of the Forward Christian Center. This year has been monumental for many of us because, simply put, God has been demonstrating his love and his goodness toward us as a ministry. Lately, God has been doing an over-the-top, ridiculously good thing for many of the partners here at the Forward Christian Center. I've gotten testimonies that God has given many of you all raises. I've gotten testimonies that God has been giving many of you all increases. I've been getting testimonies and notifications that God has been giving some of you all promotions that you didn't even apply for. Y'all not saying that. I've, I've, I've been getting notifications that many of you all have gotten inheritances without any sorrow. Let me back that up because a lot of times some of y'all are waiting for inheritance for your, from, that's going to come when your mama die and your daddy die and your cousin die. But can I say God has given out inheritances when everybody's still living? Ooh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Inheritances without sorrow. God has also been demonstrating himself where people have been getting insurance claims that they have been waiting on. As a matter of fact, I was told that someone recently have just gotten a release. I'm about to say release. A release of $50,000 into their bank account. So in other words, they got 50,000 reasons to give God some praise. Ah, y'all, 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 y'all go get this because, because some of y'all, y'all just giving God pancakes because the Lord haven't come your way. But can I say, if you begin to rejoice with them that's already rejoicing, you better believe God going to hit you with the wobble up too. So, so, so during this year, God has been pouring out those benevolent blessings toward the partners of the Forward Christian Center. Not only has he been increasing us, the Lord has been also decreasing some things as well. I also got notification that the Lord has divinely forgiven a $100,000 student loan. Anybody got some student loans that need to be released? What well, can I say? God is still releasing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so God is literally doing all of these good things to the forward Christian center. But God wanted me to let you know this morning that it's time for your release as well. Yeah. It's time for your release as well. Here in this book, the book of Acts, we can see where Paul and Silas, Scripture says that they are in jail, the Bible says or shows us that prior to them being thrown in jail, Paul and Silas, they were out ministering. They ran into a woman or a girl with the spirit of divination on her life. The Bible says that when uh, the woman with the spirit of divination rubbed Paul the wrong way, Paul turned around and he rebuked that spirit off of that young lady's life. Somebody say, Somebody, uh, when you begin to think about it, you start to think, well, if God, if Paul rebuked the spirit off of a young lady, wouldn't everybody be happy? Well, quite the contrary happened. Because she wasn't able to make those uh, that were pimping her gift on her life, uh, they messed up her money, their money. And the Bible shows us that because their money was messed up, they got upset and they threw Paul and Silas into jail. The Bible says that while Paul and Silas was there in jail, uh, instead of them getting down on their disposition on their circumstances, they end up giving God praise. This is good because this lets me know that Whenever 
you're waiting for God to release a blessing in your life, you may have to become imprisoned by certain situations. Yeah, everybody want to receive the blessings and the goodness of God, but can I say, sometimes those blessings are set up by certain prison situations that may happen in our life. If I can keep it real, uh, Paul and Silas, they wouldn't get excited about another car. They wouldn't get excited about a horse or chariot. They wouldn't get excited about another house that would be given to them. But one thing that they would become excited about is if the Lord was able to release them from the shackles and the chains that was holding them down. Can I say that God is speaking to us as a church to let us know that whatever you're going through right now, that seems like it's holding you down. Whatever's happening in your life, and it seems like you are imprisoned by a certain situation. If I keep it real, some of y'all feel imprisoned by not getting some child support that you were due for some years. Some of y'all are feeling imprisoned by the marriage that you're in because you're not getting any uh, acclimates or any affirmation that you feel like you should be getting. But can I say God is speaking to his church to let you know that it is time for your release and he's about to let those shackles and those chains go from your life. So here's my point, and I want you to get this. While you're waiting on God, keep on praising and keep on praying. This is good because Paul and Silas clues us in on the posture that we should have. While we're waiting on God, keep on praising. While we're waiting on God, keep on praying to God. Sometimes we get lax and we get, we get off our game because we're, we're like, is my prayers really effective? And is my, my praise really effective? But Paul and Silas shows us the power of your prayer and the power of your praise. And sometimes you're looking for something to happen right now. But God is just wanting you to posture and position your heart toward him so that he can begin to give you the breakthrough that you're looking for. But you got to keep on praying and you got to keep on praising So our posture, what's our posture? To pray? What's our posture? To praise? What's our posture? To go to worship service? What's our posture? To intercede for others in prayer? What's our posture? To give to others? What's our posture? To help those that's in need even when we need help ourselves. What's the posture of the believer? To operate by these divine principles that God gives us to do on a daily basis. Sometimes we try to get, get, get things from God, but we don't want to give him something. But God is saying right now that he's going to begin to release some things, but he needs you to continue to do what you know to do that's good. So while you're waiting on God, keep on praying and keep on praising. Acts 16 and 25 says this, around midnight, somebody say around midnight. Paul and Silas. They were praying and singing hymns to God. Hold on, hold on. They, they, while while in, in, in prison, they, they were praying and they were singing Baptist hymns to God. I don't know what no A and B selection is, but they were in prison, bound by chains. Things funky around them. Things smelling around them. But yet they had the wherewithal to give God praise. And if I keep it real, there's some things that's funky around y'all. There's some things that don't smell good around y'all. There's some things that don't feel good around y'all. But you better not let that stop you from praying for, to God. Don't you let that stop you from praising God. Because while you're waiting on God, you got to keep on praying and praising. Old folks used to say it like this, time waiting in God is not time wasted with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is saying, while you're waiting on me, keep on praising, keep on worshiping, keep on serving, keep on loving, keep on giving, because your breakthrough is about to happen. But you got to be willing to keep on doing what you know to do. 
There's a thought out there uh, that somebody wrote, and it is this. They said, until God opens the next door, you might as well praise him in the hallway. You're waiting for the next door. You're waiting for the next miracle to happen. You're waiting for the next sign. You're waiting for the next wonder. But while you're waiting on it, you keep on doing what you know to do that's good. You keep on serving, keep loving, keep giving, because God is about to open up something new. But you can't forsake what you're already doing. This is good because this is going to encourage you to keep on hunkering down and to keep on doing what God called you to do. So while you're waiting for the next door to open, praise God in the hallway. Pull out your praise shoes. Pull out your prayer shawl. Hallelujah. Pull out your fasting and your praying. Pull out your daily devotionals. Those things that you know that get you over, you keep on doing it. Because I can tell you, if you keep on praising God, eventually your breakthrough is going to come through. Luke 18, 27 says this. Jesus said, what is impossible to man is possible with God. And, and the reason why I tell you to, and I want you to see this. I keep telling you, despite what happens, to give him the praise. Because when you can't break yourself through, you might as well give praise to the one that can break you through. When you can't find the ends to meet, some of y'all there, you got a whole lot of ends, but for some reason you can't get them to meet. In other words, you got more money, more money than money. Got a whole lot of ends, but they but they're not meeting. Keep giving God the praise because he's the one that can cause your ends to meet and push you from not having enough to more than enough because he is the God of more than enough. So what seems impossible to you can become possible to God. Here's this thought, and I want you to write it down. When the impossibilities of men meet the possibilities of God, a release takes place. Yeah. When you can't do what you sought out to do anymore, that's when God intervenes and gives you your desired outcome. That's called a release. When you've written your budget and your budget is blown from the rent, from the light bill, from the water bill, and you haven't even gotten to the insurance bill and your daily living, this is when your possible collides with God's impossible and begins to become a release in your life. I, I, I think sometimes as believers, we don't realize how truly we're dependent Dependent on God. Sometimes we think that we can do certain things in our strength and our own with our own thought processes and with our own intellect. But God is saying that in this season, He's going to use a release to show up in your life that's going to blow your mind. That's going to blow your thoughts. That's going to blow your reasonings. That's going to blow your intellects. And it's going to supersede what you have on your mind because God got you on his mind. It's a release. So, so what is God saying? God is saying it's time for your release. You're looking for something deep, but God is simply saying it's time for your release. You've been bound for far too long. You've been locked up for far too long. Some of y'all have been incarcerated 
by what the devil told you you can't do and what you can't get done and what's not going to happen in your life. But God says he's coming to give you a release. He got the key to your chains, and he's about to let you go. Because it's time for your release. What, what is this release you're talking about, Pastor Charles? What is it? I'm not just talking about just a regular release. I'm talking about a divine release. Let's look at it. Let me define it because I believe the power to define gives us the ability to fulfill. A divine release is the promise of God to release you from every burden that you that could hinder you in any area of your life from moving forward. It's a promise from God to remove the burdens from anything that's going to hinder you from moving forward in God. In other words, a divine release helps you get rid of your insecurities that you have. A divine release helps you get past the barriers that's in your life. Some of y'all, y'all have barriers in your life where when you take one step, it seems like the enemy knocks you back two steps. Some of y'all, y'all been been serving God and loving God and you've made declarations and commitments that you're going to do this, that, and the other. But for some reason, when it gets time for you to do that, you can't quite move forward. But God is saying this is your season of divine release where he's going to free you from those burdens. He's going to free you from the guilt. He's going to free you from the shame. He's going to free you from the bondage. It's time for your release. What is it? What is it? The release is what I call a clemency. It's a discharge. It's an acquittal where when you know you did something, God says, I don't care what you did. My son done set you free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's an acquittal where, where, where it says you know to do good, but you do it not. And that's considered sin. But God says, I don't care about your sin because my grace is still sufficient for you. A divine release. And the reason why God is going to give you the release is because you haven't freely accepted God's love and his forgiveness for you. And some of y'all are walking around in condemnation thinking God is against you. But God says, no, 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 I'm not against you. I'm for you. And as long as I'm for you, who can be against you? This is good. This is good. It's a release. In other words, God is giving you clemency. He's giving you a discharge. He's giving you an acquittal. In other words, he's going to allow you to be delivered. Yeah. He's going to allow you to be delivered. And I love this because sometimes those that don't think that they need to be delivered, Need to be delivered. Who it was? It was the woman uh, that said, I freed a thousand slaves. Harriet Tubman. But I would have freed a thousand more if they knew that they were slaves. Woo! Come on, think about it. Come on, you, you be, I freed a thousand slaves? But I would have freed a thousand more? But they didn't think that they were slaves. And sometimes we're slaves to our own self. And just because you can walk around don't mean that you're not in a prison. Prisoners get to walk around their cell. But the difference between somebody free and somebody in prison is that the ones that are bound in prison, they can't get free from the chains. But God is saying, it's time for your release. Time for your release. Release from what? Imprisonment. Release from illegal incarcerations. Yeah, you think the police just sticking people up illegally. No, the devil been sticking many believers up 
for many years. And he's been holding your promises. He's been holding your dreams. He's been holding your ambitions. He's been holding you on that $8 making job when God called you to walk in the wealth and the promises that he has for your life. In other words, you're better than $8. You're better than $9. You're better than $20. You're better than $40. You're better than $100 an hour. Oh, okay, okay, let me go back. What, what, what was Harriet telling me? I would have freed, I freed a thousand slaves, but I would have freed a thousand more if they knew that they were Pastor Charles trying to free some slaves up in here. But if you don't think that you better than $100 an hour or $50 an hour or $30 an hour, you'll remain that slave. But I'm speaking to the ones that want to come out. I'm speaking to the ones that want to come up. I'm speaking to the ones that want to do a little bit better. If you want to stay the slave, stay in your seat. But if you want to step in the riches and the freedom and the liberty, hallelujah, that God has for you, you can have it if God says that you can have it. Why we got to struggle? God ain't called us to struggle. He called us to have life and that more. It's called the God kind of life. It's called the God kind of life. And you can sit down, you can sit down. But so, so, so here, so here in this text, we can see where Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were a slave. But the good news about being in prison is that we serve a God that can free you from your situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think about freedom, I start to think about how a forward partner few months ago was facing 20 to 30 years in prison. <laughs> yeah. 20 to 30 years in prison. They call us because most people call pastors when they find themselves in certain situations to begin to pray. For a few weeks, we will go down to the courthouse with some of the other pastors on my staff. And we will pray for them. Knowing things ain't look good. We would go and pray anyway. Then we go down there. Having to speak before the judge. Not knowing. If what they did. Was true or not. But yet we still got to vouch for them. That this person. Is this character. And that person is that character. Facing 20 to 30 years in life. life that's a life sentence. And on top of that, they had a $100,000 debt that was assessed on them. That they said, when we lock you up, we're going to let you work this thing out over the 30 years. Because you owe us $100,000. But while in that courtroom, when the verdict was about to come forth, we begin to pray. Yeah. Yeah. We begin to pray. And when we begin to pray, the heart of the judge begin to shift. Hallelujah. The atmosphere begin to change. And the judge said with her mouth, I can't do this. I ain't telling you nothing that I heard. I'm telling you something that I know. And, and this wasn't the judge that they wanted. Because they know she used to lock people up. But when, but the Lord began to shift the atmosphere. And she said, I can't do this. And the Lord reminded me. I got the heart of the king in my hand. And I turned the king's head to the left and to the right. And although the verdict should have been one thing, God shift that thing. Hallelujah. God released that thing. And he set them free. 
and released them from a $100,000 debt. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I came here to encourage you to let you know the God of the release is in the building. God, the God of the release, hallelujah, is in this atmosphere. And whatever has been holding you, and whatever has been holding you down, God is saying it's time for your release. Hallelujah, it's time for you to begin to get what I got for you. It's time for you to step over in the overflow. It's time for you to receive all of the goodness that I have for your life. Somebody shout release. Release, release. that's what it is. It's a release. It's a release. So God changed the heart of the judge, freed or redropped the charges, canceled the $100,000 debt, Hallelujah, and set the captive free. Woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you did it, but God is going to set the captive free. I know you're going to make mistakes, but God is here to set the captives free. I know you're the Mr. Mark, and I know you didn't cross the T's and dot all your I's, but God is releasing you. Hallelujah. I know you didn't always get it right all over your life. I know you made some mistakes here and there, and some of y'all still making some mistakes right now. But can I say the God of the release is here in this building. And Jesus, he will drop those charges and free you from your captive situation. Yeah, yeah, he'll free you from things that's going on in your mind where you're thinking, I should have, could have did this. But God says, I don't care about your should have, could have, would have, because I'm still the God of the release in your life. So here it is, here it is. It's time for your release. Why? Because it is the desire of God to grant release and relief to his people. Come on, it's God's desire. His job is to grant release and relief to his people. While we're waiting on that divine release, let's continue to use, get this, our divine principles. I'm going back to it. What's the divine principles? I know I should be praying to God. I know I should be giving God praise. I know I should be giving God worship. I know I should be fasting. I know I should be praying. I know I should be interceding. I know I should be giving. I know I should be loving. Because while you're waiting on God's divine release, Continue to work God's divine principles in the word. Because those principles are going to set you up to get the release in your life. Because if you do the possible, God's going to show up and do the impossible in your life. So here's what God is saying. It's time not just for your release, but your divine release. Because you are on God's mind. Yeah. You're on God's mind. You're on God's mind. Acts 16 and 26 says, suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And the prisons were shaken to its foundations. All the doors, all the doors, all the doors immediately flew open. And the chains of every prisoner fell off. Woo, that was a good place to shout. I know y'all waiting for some music, but you got to begin to, hallelujah, have some, some music down in your soul. You got to begin to have, hallelujah, some praise down in your soul. You got to begin to praise God in advance for what he's about to do. Because God is setting you up not just for a release, but a divine release that's going to cause those shackles and those chains to fall off of your life. So here's what God is saying. God is saying there's three types of release, and I want you to get it. Number one, it's the daily release. Somebody say daily. The daily release. Lamentation 3 and 22 says this, because of the Lord's great love. Woo, this is good. We are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. I can stop right there because this is good because this lets me know that despite what's going on in my life, God is still good to me daily. Woo. Yeah, yeah, he's still good to me daily. 
He has daily love. He has daily compassion. He seeks to, hallelujah, uphold me with his righteous right hand. He seeks to, hallelujah, have me walk on the up and up because he's a loving God, a caring God, a compassionate God. And he's got me on his mind. So because of the Lord's great love, let's get it, let's get it. We are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new. New, 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 everything new, 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 everything new. Yeah, they're new every morning. Come on, come on. This is, I, I just want you to begin to think about the goodness of God. Because it's good, not just some mornings, not just every other morning, but every morning. Yeah. Every day I get up, I'm grateful. Every day I get up, I'm thankful. Every day I get up, I appreciate the Lord that much more because he's given me life. And that more abundantly. And this is why you got to keep a heart of gratitude because sometimes you'll start to become discontent with him waking you up every morning. With him starting you on your way. With him pouring out miracles and signs and wonders. For him giving you air to breathe. When your brother and sister choking, daily he gives us new mercies. Daily he gives me new grace. That's why I love him so much. Because with man sometimes the grace and the mercy, it runs out. But with God, God says, the more you need, it's the more I got. <laughs> Yeah, the more you need, it's the more he got. You can't run out of God's grace. You can't run out of God's mercy. You can't run out of God's love. For his loving kindness will continue to draw you. Hallelujah. So I thank God for the daily release. Daily he loads me up with benefits. He's my daily bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know my wife, she can cook sometimes. But I don't need her cooking all the time. I need God's daily bread because it'll give me food for my soul. Hallelujah, it'll regulate my mind. It'll keep my emotions. It'll stop me from tossing and turning. It won't give me no cramps. Hallelujah, it won't put no gout in my toe. But his mercy and his love and his bread from heaven fuels my soul. Hallelujah. I'm talking about something that man can't give. It's his daily release. Sometimes all you got to do is put up your hand and just say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I know I'm over time. Let me get, give you this. The second release, it's a time release. Yeah. First release, daily. The second release, it's a time release. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says this, to everything there is a season. It's a time for every purpose under heaven. This is good because this lets me know that if I keep walking this thing out, God has a certain timetable in which he's going to release his blessings. He's going to release his goodness. And some of y'all, I'm just telling you, don't get weary and well-doing. Hallelujah. Because in due season, you're going to, you don't, don't, don't faint because in due season, you're going to reap. You're going to reap, you're going to reap, you're going to reap. Because God got a certain timetable. And you just got to get to that time. Oh, I, I see it, I see it. Before I was born, before you was born, God had our life in mind. And in our life, he got certain blessings set in our timeline. And some of y'all, y'all getting discouraged because you're like, God, where you at? God says, you just ain't got to that time in, my, in your life. 
And when you get to that time in your life, my release going to happen. Your breakthrough is going to show up. Your deliverance is going to manifest. And you're like, Lord, why I got to keep coming to the altar over and over for this thing and that thing? God says, you got to get to this time, baby. But don't let that stop you from bringing your time and bringing your gift to the altar. You just keep on coming. And you just keep on coming. And you just keep on coming. Because after a while, in the right time, your breakthrough going to show up. And your breakthrough going to happen. So why you can't frown on people that's coming to the altar because you don't know when it's going to be their time and when it's going to be their season. You keep on coming, and God, he's going to eventually give you your release. So there are three types. I told you what it is, a daily release, a time release. But the greatest of them is this divine release. Yeah, there's a divine release. There's a divine release, a divine release. Acts 16 and 26 was a divine release. It says, suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately, somebody say immediately. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Let me start off because God began to drop the woman lock at the beginning. It says, suddenly, somebody say suddenly. There was a massive earthquake. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately, somebody say immediately. Somebody say immediately. So, so the divine release is when God suddenly and immediately delivers you from your situation. And the reason why I like this divine release is because it's not predicated on day and it's not predicated on time. This thing comes totally from God. It comes from God. This one is all on God. And some of us, we're at that point where we need a miracle, where we need a breakthrough. God says, this one is on me, baby. You don't have to have no faith for it. You don't have to pray for it. You don't have to travail for it. You don't have to get down on your knees for it. I'm going to give you a divine release just because I love you and I care for you. And you're my son and you're my daughter and I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll be right there until the uttermost parts of the world for you. So, so it's this divine release. And as I close, this divine release has nothing to do with your day. Nothing to do with your time. It's all on God. Don't need no faith. Because when God gives you the divine release, he's doing it because he said so. He said so. Why are you blessed? Because God said so. Why are you still in your sound mind when you know you should have lost it years and years ago? Because God said so, and he's given you a divine release despite the faith that you did not have. So as I close, your divine release, get this, it will cause others to receive their divine release. How do I know Acts 16, 25 says this, the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. Who woke up to see the prison doors wide open? Hold on, hold on. I thought God was there to release Paul and Silas. But the jailer was able to get his release. Hallelujah. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew a sword to kill them. But Paul shouted to him, stop. Don't kill yourself. We still here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and, dungeon and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, get this, Sir, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved, along with some of the people in your household. A few of the people in your household. Everyone in your household, 
and they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who live in his household. This divine release, because it comes from God, God is not just going to free you and give you what you need. He's going to free your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your nephews, Bunkisha them, Shaquita them, Jada them. Hallelujah. He's going to free those that are connected to you because of his divine anointing and release that's on your life. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise.